And uh, now we've got this join, which, if I zoom right in on it, it's a hard join between the layers that we've just created for the reflection and the background layer. And I'm just going to soften that, that join just a little bit. So with the reflection layers group selected, not any of the individual layers, but with the group, if I click the layer mask icon, add layer mask icon, that's going to add a layer mask to the whole group. And then with that, I'm going to gra grab the gradient tool and I'm going to choose um, black to white gradient. Remember, white reveals, black conceals. And on the layer mask, so with that layer group selected, I'll click on the layer mask. You can see the little handles go around the edge of it when I do. And then I'm going to, because on my color palette, I'm going from black to white. So where I start, where I click to begin with is going to be black. And where I release is going to be white. I want to reveal the group for the reflection. And I want to conceal the edge that we're trying to just tidy up. Hold down the shift key to keep the line straight on a diagonal or vertical. And I just want a little transition from black to white. And as I let go there, you can see that's just softened that edge. If I just turn on and off, that you can see that's the that's the the uh, layer I've just created. If I turn it on and off, you can just see it's just softening that join there. Actually, looking at that, I could probably go just a little bit, a little bit taller. Oh, I've revealed a bit of the chin there. Let's let's undo that. There we go. That's a little better. I just wanted this the neckline here not to be too sort of uh, split off 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 to one side because remember one of the copies I made was a little bit wider than the other so we're going to end up with things not lining up if we're not careful so that's um that's our transition join done and this is almost our image done now the next step I want to take is to crop it a little bit because I'm now going to just sort of do a little bit of finishing off and when it comes to things like just a little bit of vignetting here and there we want to be, be vignetting to the final edges of the image so let's grab our crop tool and I just want to crop to just keep just take the hand out that's that hand's got quite a lot of detail in it and I think the um, the point of keeping it out of the image is just to just to not have too many distractions that draw the eye um, too close to the edge of the image. So if I just crop to that sort of point there, we've got the main part of the, part of the image drawing our eye here, and we've got just this face and these lines here nicely visible in the reflected water surface. So that's a pretty good place to crop it. We now just need to make... Um, that water reflected look just a little bit more because it, it wouldn't reflect all of the light so it would be a little darker and we may put a little, just a little bit of toning on it so let's go to the layers palette and make a new layer and we're going to grab a color um, and as you can see here my tools palette is is tall and thin and goes off the bottom so if I click the little arrows at the top that makes it into two columns I'm going to just click on the uh, foreground color and I'm looking for a sort of a slightly purpley navy blue so we've got the blues and the purples just clicking sort of more in the blue than the purple and I'm just going to pick a sort of a color that's got some a nice rich color quite a dark one so somewhere around about here I'm going to press OK on that and then once again with my gradient tool, this time I'm going to go from the foreground color to transparent. So I can close that. And I'm just going to drag a line uh, from, uh, remember where you start the line is, is the color on the left of the gradient at the top. And where you release is whatever you see on the right of the gradient at the top. So I want the blue at the top and I want it sort of transitioning through the horizon line um, so that we get something like that. Now that obviously uh, is is ugly as it is. We need to just set that to a blending mode. Let's go for soft light, and we're going to drop the opacity right down. Uh, we don't really want this too visible as a ch as an edit. We just want it sort of subtly, just to change the tones a bit in that part of the image. So there we go. That's that's pretty good. So soft light at around about 20, 25 percent, something like that, just gives a different tone, and it's also just a little bit of vignetting still. Uh, and as you know, I like my vignettes. So that's a reasonable toning for the top part of the image. And the final step on this image is going to be to just push the colors just that final bit, just to really finish it off and give it a bit of a, a bit of zip. We're going to go for a hue saturation layer right at the top here and um, try to see the image. The first thing that leaps out is that it needs a little bit of red and a little bit of blue. So I'm just going to push the saturation on the red up a little 
and I'm going to push the saturation on the blues up a little. I'm going to mess around just a little bit with the cyans and just see whether or not that helps us out at all. That's mostly giving us um, extra colour over here, which is not really where I want it. So I'll leave that that edit. You can see it's changing these clouds here, look. Um, not really any reason to particularly draw our attention there. The colours that are helping us here are the reds and the yellows and stuff. So let's just have a look and see what happens to the yellows. That, that's quite nice. The yellows gives us a good strong boost in that part of the image where we're where we're really drawing attention. And then let's just do a, a quick overall boost just to really sort of liven the whole thing up just a little bit. Let's see whether or not there's a opportunity for a lightness tweak. I don't think the lightness is doing much for us. It's actually backing off the colour a little. Anytime you drag this lightness slider up or down, you'll find that a, a consequence of, of doing that also kills your saturation a bit. So um, if you're going to use the lightness slider in the hue saturation window, you kind of constantly sort of be balancing between tweaking the lightness and then tweaking the saturation. So uh, that's that's something just to be aware of. And um, I think our saturation is looking pretty good there. So. That that I'm just doing that while I'm talking. That I'll just tell you what I ended up at. I've ended up with an overall saturation boost of 15, um, which is balancing off a lightness boost of five, just because it had all got a little bit dark. Uh, we've pushed our reds, we've pushed our yellows a little bit, and we've pushed our blues, but not our cyans. And hopefully, that just gives it that final little zip to finish it off there. I think uh, if I was going to do anything else, I would probably just maybe lighten off the face a little bit. Um, I'm not sure we quite got the processing the same way Jolene did. But that there is um, the full set of uh, layers that Jolene did for her image. Um, I think hers came out maybe slightly a little better than mine did. But there you go. I hope you found that useful. And I hope you'll tune in next time for a new tutorial. At last, we're going to get to do something different. This tutorial's <laughs> been a monster. It's gone on for ages. So thank you very much for watching. And uh, I hope you'll uh, join us next week. All the best. Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com.